after doing this show as long as we have, observing the strangeness of the modern world on a weekly basis, it's hard to not conclude that time is a flat circle and everything's just kind of running on a loop. So it's no surprise, really, that after a little over three years, the mysterious metal monoliths somehow returned. Uh, so 2020 was a particularly hellish year, what with the pandemic and the election and whatnot. So you can be forgiven for not remembering this relatively minor footnote. Mm -hmm. But in November of that year, a strange metallic triangular prism standing three meters tall was discovered in a very remote area of the Utah desert by state biologists surveying wildlife who declined to share the specific location to discourage people from venturing out into the wilderness and getting themselves killed or stranded. But nevertheless, Within just hours, some dude on Reddit somehow found it on Google Earth and adventurers were rushing to see it and photograph it. We had one of our own, remember? Did we? Yeah, I built one out of uh, oh, wrap wrapping yeah, paper. and <laughs> We did, that's right. <laughs> Satellite photos actually indicated that the monolith had sat there undisturbed for more than four years. And to this day, it's unknown who put it there and why. Though a New Mexico art collective did insinuate that it was them. Because of its location among undisturbed wilderness and Native American relics, it only took a week before a group of nature conservationists took it upon themselves to show up and remove the monolith under the ethos of leave no trace, which was probably for the best. Yeah, it's a pretty big trace. But the excitement and mystery around the story quickly spawned other mysterious metal monoliths around the world on every continent except for Antarctica. That we know of. Yeah. There, there could be some there. Maybe they just haven't looked for it. Yeah, uh, that could be... They just haven't found it they yet. Haven't dug, they haven't got a core sample down deep enough to yeah. get one of the monoliths. So we covered this a bit at the time, but I don't think even we were aware of just how many of these things there were. A website tracking all the monolith sightings listed 224 total monoliths before the site went down in 2022. Though, to be fair, the ones they list vary visually quite a bit. A lot of them aren't particularly mysterious in terms of location. We had one here in Los Angeles. Yeah, most can be described as obvious publicity stunts, mm -hmm. as opposed to the original Utah monolith, which was hidden so well that it wasn't found for four years. Yeah, uh, as, as in UFO terminology, this would be called a flap, where one monolith pops up and then all of a sudden, you see, everyone starts seeing these monoliths yeah, everywhere. Everyone wanted a monolith in their yeah. town, mm -hmm. and it was great for business. Like, hey, before we were just some shitty little town that people gassed up their cars, but yeah. now, look at us now. We got a fucking monolith. Yeah. So maybe check out the monolith, stay around. Get some breakfast uh, down at the diner. Yeah, it's great food down at the diner. Uh -huh. She cooks a mean Eggs Benedict. Yep. But yeah, it was, it was a fun little trend that took the world by storm when... A lot of us really needed it. Uh, a distraction, please. Yeah. Well, the monolith will do, I guess. But uh, yeah, monolith fever dried up after a few months, obviously, as these trends do. But folks, new monolith just dropped. Hell yeah, which means there's at least 200 more coming right behind it. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> see how much mileage they get out of this one. Yeah. Here's Wales Online. Walkers have been left bemused by a mystery steel monolith which has appeared on a Welsh hill. Locals in Hayon Y, <laughs> sure, spotted the 10-foot-tall block of steel, which is shaped like a giant Toblerone on Hay Bluff near the Poise Town at the weekend. It follows a string of similar sightings across the UK and the US in recent years. In 2020, multiple sightings were reported in mostly isolated areas across Europe. A sighting at Compton Beach on the Isle of Wight and the Merry Maiden Stone Circle in Cornwall... Not a real country. <laughs> ...attracted hundreds of TikTokers and Instagrammers desperate to go viral. It also sparked social media chatter that it was surely the work of aliens. Some quashed those rumors, instead believing it's another elaborate piece of undercover artwork we've become accustomed to. Banksy, where are you at? Show yourself. You put the monolith up, didn't you? One of the monoliths even arrived in 2020 with the words, not Banksy, scrawled on it. Oh, well, there goes my hypothesis. <sighs> not Banksy. Hmm. It continues, Richard Haynes, who took photographs of the latest sighting while running on Hay Bluff, told Wales Online, I went off towards Hay Bluff, towards where the trig point is, and I looked over to my right. I thought it looked a bit bizarre and might be a scientific media research thing collecting rainwater, but then realized it was way too tall and strange for that. Then I went up to it, and it was around 10 foot tall, at least, and triangular, definitely stainless steel. It was hollow, and I imagined pretty light light enough for two people to carry it up and plant it in the ground. Richard said he runs the route often and had never seen the monolith before, while a friend was in the spot two weeks ago and said it wasn't there at that point. 
I did notice on Google that it's popped up fairly recently, and from what I can gather, it disappears after a couple days, <laughs> Richard added. The sightings have drawn some criticism. While they look neat and might attract TikTokers, some say they're tacky, aren't funny, and damage the environment. Richard explained, I don't know about that, but it's clear someone would have had to have dug a large hole to get it in the ground. Yeah, I think it's more of people showing up and stomping all over the area, yeah. trying to get pictures of it and close to it for for literally no reason. That's it's just someone setting like, these things up. Like, at the, you know, you look at it as basic parts, like a mysterious object in a remote location. You're like, that's clever. That's mm -hmm. funny. Where's the harm in that? No, the harm comes when, like, assholes from all over the internet come to a beautiful natural place and uh, really? fuck it up. Yeah. So yeah, as you might expect, this is definitely newsworthy, but it doesn't seem to recapture the magic as the first time around no. because uh, that had all the right parts. It, it existed for a long time. It was uncovered essentially because it was so remote. It was like and you, it was, were, you were almost risking your life going to see it. And yeah, it seemed like it was very well constructed and seemingly inexplicable. Um, that isn't a monolith you're seeing. That's your first time seeing the Cybertruck. And it's, <laughs> its sharp corners are doing tricks on your mind. Yeah, that, that is a good point. Back then, this looked cool. But now I see, I see one of these metal monoliths and all I can think of is that hideous car, which I, I saw one right outside our office the other day. I forgot oh, to tell oh. you. And it did not look good. No, they looked never very did. stupid. So, yes, we've all seen that shape. You know, at least come up with a new shape, you know? Now, it is noteworthy, though, that according to people who have seen it up close, it's some great metalwork. The original Utah monolith was held together with rivets, but the one in Wales is welded together in a way where the seams are totally invisible. Mm. So they do deserve credit for not half-assing this and for putting it in a place that's at least fairly remote, though clearly not too remote considering it was there less than two weeks before being discovered. Anyways, I guess we'll see if this spawns yet another wave of mysterious metal monoliths. Probably not, but... Yeah. I mean, yeah, you kind of got the whole virality out the first time around. Yeah, so. I mean, like, if any if any trend that we've covered on the show over the last 10 years was going to come back, I would have put it as the uh, the scary clowns. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I, th I feel like a couple times people tried to get bring it back, and people were like, no, buddy, that was 2015 or whatever. Yeah, you can't We've moved again. on. So, monoliths, we, we got the monoliths out of our system before. We need something new. I'm tired of the same old shit. Yeah. It's been four years. Look at us now. Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. It sucks to repeat Monolith. history. <laughs> hey, what are we doing here? We're stuck. We're just spinning our wheels. Dune. Dune is out. Hillary just announced she's teaming up with Lin-Manuel Miranda oh, to get out the vote. Go good. <laughs> Gamergate is back. Have you seen this shit? They're trying to do Gamergate too. I put that clip of Nancy Pelosi talking about TikTok in the video. Yeah, TikTok. Winner. You're gonna tick. Right, we're gonna make a TikTok toe. Gonna win. Something. It's like <laughs> it's just nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it better when George Bush uh, said, uh, fool me once, shame on, well, you know, we got the saying down in Texas, fool me, fool me twice, you don't, you don't get fooled again. That's right. Anyways, uh, moving on now to uh, another topic we covered years ago and kind of forgot. Clive Palmer, the Australian mining tycoon who some have compared to Donald Trump for various reasons, like his involvement in right-wing politics, his embrace of meme culture despite being an old man, his love of just attention in general, and the fact that he's a total prick. Mm -hmm. He's not a good person. It's not a perfect comparison, though. Uh, Clive Palmer is very much his own man, with his own quirks. One of which is his long-standing desire to build another Titanic. Game Doom. of Game 2, Titanic 2, everything's a fucking rerun. Oh my god. I, we, we shouldn't even get into it. We shouldn't give it more fuel, but the Gamergate 2 thing is so outrageously stupid it's, on its face. They're really, they just, they, again, they're doing it because like, God, I just need something in my life. I need uh, a purpose. Uh, specifically, if you look at just today when Boogie 2-9 whatever comes out, and it's like, yeah, you know what? You know what? They should just make games that are fun to play and not attacking white men. And then <laughs> everyone online was like, please explain one game. It's never <laughs> in history been a better time to enjoy video games. There is mm -hmm. literally something for everyone. But, but enough of that. Yeah. We're talking about Clive Palmer's Titanic Two. Yeah. So we first covered this story all the way back in 2017 on our old channel that, of course, was nuked by Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. it sank uh, to the bottom of the content ocean. <laughs> Thankfully, it is up on the ETC archive if you want a weird throwback to when this show had background music and I had hair. Uh -huh. It's out there. You can watch it. 
Anyways, making another Titanic is a weird idea that nevertheless has been attempted multiple times since the release of James Cameron's movie. But in every case, it has failed to come to fruition. There's certainly people who associate the Titanic with old-timey luxury and romance. But the thing most people probably associate with the Titanic is the fact that it sank on its first voyage, <laughs> resulting in over 1,500 people drowning in the freezing cold Atlantic Ocean in the dark, in the middle of the night, with only around 700 survivors. Oh, yeah. I, and wish, now, I, I wish I could have been there. <laughs> and now, uh, we, 2017 us didn't know this yet, but now it's also associated with a submarine that went yes. down there on a tourism ex yes. exploration. Yeah. So that alone is enough to consider the entire concept cursed. Then you add in the submarine imploding last year. And you think, if you're normal, you think maybe we should stay the hell away. Yeah, maybe the universe anything. is telling us, leave the Titanic alone. Yeah. Just let it rest. I like that it's it's been relegated to like a, a tourism site and also it's they blow up uh, bouncy castles that look like the sinking Titanic for kids to play on. That's yeah. how far removed we are from... Also, every modern cruise ship dwarfs the Titanic. Yeah, I don't think people have thought this through. Mm -hmm. People don't even like visiting the Queen Mary, and it's still sort of floating and accessible by car. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it, it's pretty much dry docked, but in a way that it looks like it's in the water. But, yeah, um, and it's still rotting out. And yeah, it's all full of ghosts and shit. But um, yeah, literally no one asking to take that thing out on the high seas. Mm -hmm. um, and the only real difference between the Queen Mary and the Titanic is uh, one of them sunk very <laughs> yeah. infamously yeah. and had a movie made about it. And, and places, even like the traveling exhibits, have done the recreation of that grand entryway and staircase. Yeah. So it's like if you want to experience you know, the old school luxury If you're ever in Belfast, the Titanic Museum is an incredible museum. <laughs> yeah. I didn't expect much going in, but it is a great experience. You get to, because they built it in Belfast. It was a massive project. Everyone there was uh, pretty bummed out when, uh, you know, like, Belfast, oh, the shipbuilding capital. Oh, fuck. Damn it. It's not our fault. We built it just fine. Yeah. Iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> God had other plans. <laughs> But yeah, the Titanic, it was pretty fancy by 1912 standards, but compared to modern cruise ships, the Titanic was tiny, cramped, and lacking in amenities. Mm -hmm. So it's unclear what a Titanic 2 would even be. Would it be a faithful recreation of the original? Or just a modern cruise ship, but with some Victorian-era aesthetics? In any case, it's not the Titanic. No. But yeah, Titanic 2 has been on Clive Palmer's to-do list for over a decade. The project was first announced in 2013, and seemingly no progress was made in the ensuing years. But now Clive Palmer is back to let everyone know he's still doing it for some reason. And the reason is probably attention. Yeah. Here's the Belfast Telegraph. Australian mining tycoon Clive Palmer has revived plans to build a replica of the Titanic, a decade after first floating the idea of constructing a copy of the Belfast-built ship. The billionaire held a press conference at the Sydney Opera House on Wednesday where he unveiled the current designs for the vessel, which he said would be far, far superior than the original. Well, God, I'd hope so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> the least you'd expect. Uh-huh. Th now, this one is unsinkable. We I know promise. they said that. I know they said that about the first one, but trust <laughs> me. A very trustworthy guy. This, that's the Clive Palmer will not sink guarantee. Okay, uh, Palmer told journalists his company, Blue Star Line, would construct the ship of love and the ultimate in style and luxury, but admitted he does not yet have a shipyard secured to complete the construction. So he's, he's exactly as far along with this as he was um, 11 years ago. Yeah. But he's still at it. Just letting y'all know. Yeah. Titanic 2 is coming. Any day now. Please give me money. Mm-hmm. During his latest press conference, Palmer blamed the COVID pandemic for the most recent delays and hit back at suggestions the project was a hoax or a publicity stunt, saying he has enough money to build the Titanic 10 times over. <laughs> he claimed a couple of million people had already registered interest in being on the 2,500 person vessel. He also blamed the COVID pandemic for the delays in the construction, saying people should believe him this time because I've got more money now, so I could do the Titanic. I'm going to do it, he said. It's a lot more fun to do the Titanic than it is to sit at home and count my money. All you need to be happy, I've found in my life, is to have someone that loves you, somewhere to sleep at night, and enough for a good meal. Beyond that, the rest is an illusion. It's like playing golf. What? 
The tycoon said he was confident he could secure a shipyard in time for construction on the vessel to start early in 2025, with the ship's maiden voyage from Southampton to New York, replicating the ill-fated 1912 voyage of the original, scheduled for June 2027. Just at face value, this is an asshole thing to say. Like, I got more money than I know what to do with. I'm bored. Like, I, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of anything Helping, else. Helping, yeah, just improving society in any way. Yeah, in, instead of anything else, I'm going to rebuild the Titanic. Okay. I feel like it would be a lot more personally fulfilling to feed hungry people. Yeah. Or house them or clothe them or anything else. Yeah, it's because, again, if you want to feel like you're walking through the Titanic, the Queen Mary is right there, and I'm, I'm sure in other parts of the world, they've also got old restored ships that mm -hmm. you can go to, and they throw Halloween parties there. No, and, no, no. <laughs> on my Titanic, not a mere 1,500 people will drown. 2,000 or more will drown. Thank you. I'm Clive Palmer. Like, it, it, this is so dumb. Clive Palmer. Also, like, I'm curious, like, is it... Uh, is the engine system going to be the same as back then? Because uh, can you imagine, I mean, sitting on the deck of a, a cruise ship just breathing in, like, black fucking coal dust? Yeah. Mmm, the lap of luxury. Yeah, it's back then it was I've like, ah, this, of. this air is so much cleaner than the mines. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but they, now people have different They have different, different standards. standards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, yeah, down in the bowels of the ship, it will literally look like the video of the people on the oil rig. Yeah. <laughs> people just down there covered in sweat and goop and just, like, Shoving coal into burning things and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, the the on the doctor on the ship only has circa 1912 medical instruments. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If someone's sick, they they get leeches out. Yeah. They well, bleed the sickness out of them. Sorry, we got to... We're moving literally at a snail's pace, so well, you'll have to wait a couple days to get into New York and get proper health care, but uh, yeah. rest assured, these leeches have been approved by the uh, Belfast County Medical Examiner. I think people really underestimate how fucking boring a transatlantic ship uh, tr journey Dude. would be without, like, the, just the so much to do that you have on modern cruise ships. Even now, there's still, I believe, going on on TikTok, uh, the, oh, <laughs> the, the, the cruise around the world, yeah. where people have been losing their minds for months now. Yeah. And also, there was a bunch of big infighting on the boat because some people paid, like, up front and then some people waited and got a discount, and they're fucking angry at each other. And so there, it's like a whole floating... It, a, it's a floating HOA. Yeah, it's bizarre. So anyways, based on the 2,500 passenger figure, it sounds like he does literally want to build a one-to-one -one faithful recreation of the original Titanic. And a promo video from a few years back backs this up. Which again, it's very funny, because compared to modern cruise ships, the Titanic would have been boring as hell with its few recreational activities mostly restricted to first-class passengers. Is he really going to build a recreation of the lower-class decks yes. where everyone was yes, just fucking is. shoved in there? Yes. Yes, it's part of the project. You gotta have, you gotta have the lower-class decks. Okay. For, like, you know, Irish immigrants escaping famine trying yeah. to find uh, passage to New York City. Why doesn't anyone want to take the <laughs> ticket to the bottom barrel of the ship? There is not a single window down there. Just no daylight yes. will ever touch the lower deck. The good news, you will be killed almost instantaneously. Yes. You'll be the first you, to drown. You will not be suffering in the ice cold water above. <laughs> okay, so who's really good in first class? Uh, yeah, so the first class people uh, made up about a third on the original, so like... Yeah, I like every, it, th this is a very funny thing with just all historic things where when people picture themselves living in the past, they always assume that they would be obviously wealthy and powerful. Yeah. Um, when the truth is the vast majority of people living at really any point in time were having a really, really bad time. Uh, just by your own standards, and there are probably people that watch the show that do fly first class, but would you fly first class or coach? Because that is how people are going to travel on this fucking thing. It's like... It would be, it, it, assu assuming the first class tickets would be outrageously expensive. Oh, yeah. They're going to jack the price up here. Yeah. Uh, Better jack you, something you know, up for that price. You know, a lot of, a lot of people want one on that Titanic, and there's only so many first class suites on the Titanic. You know what this parallels pretty we uh, well with? That's something that was already experimented and tried and failed, is that fucking Star Wars hotel yep. in, <laughs> in yep. Florida. No, it's exactly that. 
Yeah. Which, like, on paper, even up to when it opened, I'm like, yeah, it's a pretty cool idea. I'm, this will probably be successful. And it's like, turns out the amount of people actually interested in that was uh, way, way fewer than yeah. anyone would have guessed. And the cost to operate it ne- made it necessary like, that the prices were that. Ex- buddy, I just need a place to sleep at night. Yeah, especially you're walking, like, the park all day. I mean, yeah. in that case, you just kind of go to the... what? I, it's a dumb idea regardless. Yeah. But here's CNN. Passengers will be encouraged to dress for the 1900s, but it's not mandatory, a spokesperson said. The ship itself will be 269 meters long and 32.2 meters wide, slightly wider than the original. Capacity will be 2,345 passengers spread across nine decks with 835 cabins. Almost half of those will be reserved for first-class passengers. Third-class passengers will be treated to stew and mash <laughs> gruel at, at long tables in a communal dining hall <laughs> as they were on the original boat. No! <laughs> get down! <laughs> get, get down there! <laughs> I saw some rabble try to make their way onto the first class deck. Also, no, away with you! So bizarre to have half the people walking around like filling in like and cosplaying. And then the other half just dressed in flip flops and fucking board shorts. I mean, it it could be like a cool modern take on like the Stanford Prison Experiment, where you like reintroduce uh, early nineteenth century like class uh, divisions mm-hmm. into a modern world and see how quickly people adopt them in an immersive experience like trapped that. in the middle of the ocean. I think this does have value as a psychological study. Sure, and really nothing else. <laughs> But uh, yeah, a, a spokesperson did say that other meals will be available for those who want a l- less authentic experience. You'll eat your corned beef and hash, and you'll oh, like it. Oh, oh, I guess, I guess no slop for you. You, uh, you know, we're trying to have fun here. We're having an immersive experience. Uh, we're living our Titanic life, yeah. the dream that we always wanted. But I guess this guy wants uh, wants chicken tendies. <laughs> oh, does someone want his macaroni and cheese? <laughs> Eat your gruel, you fucking piece of shit. Get out! <laughs> you know what? Do it. Yeah. It, it's, this is not going to happen. If it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. I, but, uh, yeah, if it does somehow happen, I yeah, I do see value in this. I also love the idea of, like, bringing a bunch of shipbuilding jobs back to Belfast. <laughs> like, yeah. One time, though. Not enough to, like... Uh, maintain an entire generation of workers, but just like one flash in the pan. I mean, it was dangerous. It was not good work. They they had a bad time. A lot of people died. Mm-hmm. Well, we're bringing it back, baby. We're bringing it back. Belfast has indust- it moved on, but we're bringing it back. Yeah. Get down to the docks. You know what? Go for it. So it sounds like this will mostly appeal to rich LARPers who want to literally spend a week pretending that they are passengers aboard the actual Titanic in the year 1912. Maybe they'll even have an old car that people can fuck in. Yeah, they, they should put. Uh, they should at least. It's not authentic, but they should put a safety net under uh, the very front of the ship because people will. They will do the I'm flying thing, mm-hmm. and um, you, know, you just want to be safe. You, know, you don't want to have too many people fall to their deaths and then get uh, chewed up by the giant propeller. Yeah, throw the life preserver down. Oh, to shreds, you say? Oh, oh well. That's the third one this 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 week. Also, I'm very troubled by like if this if I was pitching a Titanic two, my the first bullet point would be like yes. Before you ask, there are more than enough lifeboats. Yeah, did, no we have should... so many lifeboats. No, they can't do it because it looks bad aesthetically, mm, and yeah. that wouldn't be accurate. That's true. But they're going for accuracy here. Yeah, I guess if I was really into this on the LARPer side, uh, having enough lifeboats that would piss me off. Although no. I would love to see the modern version of women and children first and all of the very angry men who are like, nah, well, I don't think so. Yeah. No, I that, made all the money. There's going to be, oh man, Titanic fans, the freaks that are going to be uh, signing up for this. Like, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if one of them is just like, you know what, to really make this, to really live the Titanic experience, I'm going to intentionally, I'm going to sabotage, I'm gonna sabotage this ship so it sinks. Yeah. So that my boyfriend, who I just met, can uh, d- drown and I can let go of him and let him sink yeah, to the yeah. bottom of the ocean. Hey, Captain, getting pretty cold out. Why don't you open her up? See what <laughs> she can really do. Let's see what this bad boy can do. Huh? Open yeah. her up. Come on. Pitch black night. Definitely no icebergs now. No, you got to just gun it. Yeah. 
look, if we go fast enough, you'd break through the iceberg. That's right. The only way that this could go wrong is if we somehow tried to turn at the last second yeah, and, then and just... end up scraping the side <laughs> of the boat open, which would never happen. That is the funniest part of it. It's like If they hit it head on, it would yeah, if they Yeah, if they had just crashed straight into it, like it wouldn't have been great, but the fact that they hit it on the side and just like tore a giant gash on the side of the ship, was like, okay, well, now it's fucked. Now it's real fucked. We're gonna, this thing's gonna be gone within an hour. Yeah, well, I'd... You know, they said it couldn't be done. They said more bodies couldn't show up at the wreck site of the Titanic. It's already happened, but baby, yeah. here comes a lot well, more. Well, and this will be nice, because when this shit, when this uh, sinks at the exact spot of the original Titanic wreckage, I mean, the old Titanic wreckage, ever since it was discovered in the 80s, it's it's really it's really gone to hell. Yeah. Like, there, it might not even be there in a couple decades. So this, the, the new Titanic, that's a new Titanic for yeah. people to, to scuba dive in. And send their shitty submarines down and, and die. There are, there's there is lots of extra Boeing parts going around right oh, now. Oh yeah, that you can build another submarine. You can get that Boeing fiberglass real cheap. No problem. So, anyways, again, again though, we're definitely overthinking this. Have you listened to us for the past ten minutes? It's not gonna happen. <laughs> no, no fucking way. We're just having fun thinking about all the ways it could go wrong. You you get it. That's why it's you a, watch. It's a thought experiment. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not watching to to with the assumption that this is gonna happen. It's not fucking happening. This is Let just it go. <laughs> Clive Palmer doing his thing. But moving on now to an update to one of the most delightful stories that we have covered this year. Do you still have the hat is still here, ladies and gentlemen? Ooh! Ooh! The Willy Wonka Glasgow Chocolate Experience. Which, which was yeah. uh yeah, it was pitched as an immersive visit to a real-life Wonka's chocolate factory, but of course ended up being a lazy AI-generated cash grab. With no chocolate at all. No chocolate at all? That's because I've... The unknown has stolen the chocolate. No! So, yeah, within days of the whole debacle, there was already a horror movie based on it being announced, and more recently, a musical was announced. And in both cases, it is very difficult to see people caring about any of those things by the time that they come out. It's like erecting a mysterious metal monolith in 2024. Yeah. Who will care? In the meantime, attendees are apparently still waiting for their refunds, and performers say that they still haven't been paid in full. But there's still a few positives that came out of this whole mess. We did at least get a brand new original character, the first original character in, in, in filmmaking history. The first the past. good thing AI has ever done. Yeah, the unknown. What is that? It's the unknown. No. And the unknown is going places. Here's Rolling Stone. The performer who brought the unknown to life is taking her talents to the London Dungeon, a haunted house tourist attraction where she'll be scaring those who paid for the pleasure. In case you need a refresher, the unknown was meant to be the villain of Willie's Chocolate Experience, an evil chocolate maker who lived in the walls of Wonka's <laughs> candy factory and wanted to steal one of his confectionery inventions. Made up by an AI chatbot and surely not based on any detail of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or its film adaptations, the masked cloaked figure became a symbol of the event's sheer absurdity. It helps that the person emerging from behind a mirror to menace the kiddos really committed to the bit. The unknown proved so popular, in fact, spawning memes and fan art, that immersive theater professionals took notice. Merlin Entertainments announced in a press release on Wednesday that the actress, a 16-year-old named Felicia, <laughs> a child, <laughs> would receive training at the popular tourist destination London Dungeon before making a guest appearance to delight thrill-seekers there on April 7th. A spokesperson for the London Dungeon, a franchise that has locations across the UK and Europe, says that Felicia, who had booked the Wonka gig as her very first acting job, is unnatural when it comes to the art of the scare, and promised she'd be all the more terrifying in her next role. If you think the mysterious character of The Unknown was unnerving, you haven't seen anything yet, they said. Wait, so she's doing The Unknown or not? Uh, well, she is... She's doing the unknown. She's making appearances of the unknown, but like they're bringing her on as like uh, like a, a cast member. Okay. So she's gonna get training there. And Look, then... I think this is great. I think that she deserves a bit more praise, credit, and money for what happened. But like bringing a sixteen-year-old down to London to start working. Well, I think it's the. It, it, I would assume it's the London Dungeon location in Glasgow. Oh, it's a chain. Yeah, and I've never heard of this. Um, can our viewers in the UK let us know? Is the, is the London Dungeon any good? Because like it's the, definitely not. The it's idea, definitely. I mean, yeah, it probably sucks. But like, yeah, the idea of like a chain of like haunted houses that's open year round, like that feels like something someone would have invented in America. I'm kind of surprised we don't have that. Well, we have uh, escape we have, rooms. No, we don't have that. We have medieval times, something that would never fucking happen in England because they're like, why? What? 
who who cares? Yeah. That's um, that's everything. Every night is medieval time. I feel like I've done one of these over the years. Like but yeah, it's like, oh, here's the torture chair. Yeah. We've recreated the torture chair. Uh here's a knight with uh, you know, a mace ball with the spikes on it. Yeah. Um anyways. And here's the unknown. Whoa! <laughs> Glasgow Zone. I was I was pleasantly uh, surprised. The unknown, the the sixteen year old who plays the unknown, that is not a wig. That's her actual hair. Cool. It's a great head of hair. Mm-hmm. So yeah, great news for young Felicia. Uh, as a young actor, you usually hope you can land a role in something good to further your career. Put her in the movie. <laughs> but landing a role in something so atrociously bad that it gets international attention can also work, apparently. So there's that. And here's CNN with some other good news to come out of Willie's chocolate experience. And now, some of the physical memorabilia that provided sparse decoration for the event's venue has been preserved for an eBay auction where bids for it are already fetching almost $1,000. Monorail Music, an independent record store based in Glasgow, is selling three of the backdrops that were hung in an attempt to decorate the warehouse after they were salvaged from the trash (laughs) by a friend of Michael Kasparis, the store's online manager. He has a workshop underneath the venue that hosted the Willy Wonka experience. And the day after everything blew up, he was just at the bins and saw all this stuff lying there, Kasparis told CNN Wednesday. He thought, I'll just take it, and was joking to me and some other friends he had had this. But then he said some good should come of it, and we suggested that Monorail auction it for medical aid for Palestinians, Kasparis added. Despite having a starting price of £10, $13, the three backdrops have already fetched 48 bids on eBay, including a highest one of 760 pounds as of Wednesday morning. The bidding is set to end on Thursday at 3.10 p.m. local time. I'm anticipating getting into four figures, Kasparis said, which is what I'm hoping for. A hastily handmade sign announcing the event's cancellation was also sold last week by Box Hub, the venue that hosted the viral experience, for 840 pounds, or $1,075, with 80% of the proceeds donated to Glasgow's Ch- Children's Hospital Charity. So yeah, look, and uh, the auction is now over. Sorry, guys. But uh, they, they did manage to raise over 2,000 pounds for Palestinian aid. Good. Just off those shitty fucking AI backdrops that were thrown in the trash. So that's, it's nice to see something positive come out of something so shitty. Yeah. But moving on now to our next story. Um, furries are a subculture that has come up on our show a lot over the years. Yes, and yes. in nearly every case, it's been positive news. Mm-hmm. This next story is not specifically about furries, but it's impossible not to make the connection when you see the high quality animal costume that veterinarians at a wildlife center in Virginia are using to trick a baby fox. That is a fur suit, or at least a fur mask. It's even got a movable mouth. That, you yeah. didn't buy that down at Spirit Halloween. That is a fucking, that is. From the first Someone community. had an idea, and then another person was like, I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sit right there. <laughs> I'll yeah. be right back. And yeah, it's being used for a good reason. Here's yeah. NBC News. A wildlife center has developed a way of stopping an abandoned newborn red fox from becoming too used to humans by feeding it wearing a fox mask. The Richmond Wildlife Center in Richmond, Virginia, shared a video of the center's founder, Melissa Stanley, feeding milk to the tiny female kit, the term for a juvenile fox, while wearing the mask in an attempt to prevent imprinting, where animals form a strong bond shortly after birth with the first other animal it receives care from. It's important to make sure that the orphans that are raised in captivity do not become imprinted upon or habituated to humans, the center said in a Facebook post Tuesday. To prevent that, we minimize human sounds, create visual barriers, reduce handling, reduce multiple transfers amongst different facilities, and wear masks for the species, the update said. Also, we installed a little litter box in case one of yeah. us has to use the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, we got a yiff room over there. It's all on the level. This is all for the for the animals. Yeah. So yeah, this isn't the first time something like this has happened. A couple years back, a wildlife sanctuary in China garnered attention for having workers dress in full body panda costumes to prevent the captive pandas from getting too attached to humans. So yeah, next time you come across a baby animal that's been abandoned, get in contact with your local furry community. To see Can't if, leave it to the professionals. See if anyone has a fursuit for that specific species of animal. Yeah, yeah. It might just save a life. I mean, obviously call local wildlife authorities first, but when in doubt, give the furries a shout. Yif, yif! Yif, yif! I don't want to do it too loud or they'll show up here. They will. So we do have the headlines half of the show coming right up, but first, gotta let you know that this episode is sponsored, and it's sponsored by Factor. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. 
Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there's more than 60 add ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. I had、uh, these coffee and the coffee smoothies and then banana smoothies. Oh,、Both、damn. Fantastic little treats、New、throughout the day. smoothies. So, what are you waiting for? Get started today and get after those goals. Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash weeklyweird50 and use code weeklyweird50 to get 50% off. That's code weeklyweird50 at factormeals.com slash weeklyweird50 to get 50% off. This episode is also sponsored by Bespoke Post. Make this year your most awesome yet with a box of awesome from Bespoke Post every month. The box of awesome is filled with carefully chosen gear from the best small brands around the world. Elliot, what did you get in your box of awesome? So they sent me the wild crafted box, and this was almost, almost creepy. It's almost like they read my mind because I literally just started growing some mint and rosemary in my yard, and this box has tools specifically for making it easy to harvest your herbs and make delicious cocktails with them. So very cool, very relevant to my interests. Oh, yeah. Whether you want to drink and eat more awesome, dress and travel more awesome, or explore more awesome, Box of Awesome has you covered this year. To get started, just take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. It's free to join, and they release new items every month across a ton of different categories. When you become a member, you'll have access to stellar discounts across a plethora of products. We're talking 30% off or more sometimes. Plus, with each Box of Awesome, you're supporting small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your Box of Awesome is from a small, up and coming brand. It's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. Get a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code WEIRD at checkout. That is boxofawesome.com, code WEIRD for a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment. boxofawesome.com, code WEIRD. All right, now for the weirdest, craziest, silliest, wildest headlines from around the world this week, starting with. Toronto dog DNA testing company IDs woman as 40% Alaskan Malamute. And proud! <laughs> <laughs> and、uh, yeah, I'm surprised every one of these dog DNA companies, this, they should be doing this test for all of them because I feel like they're really, it's kind of just, I'm not saying it's completely unscientific, but I feel like it's slightly scientific guessing. Mm hmm. Um, I mean, I did my, my、uh, previous dog before he died. I was like, we'd always wondered what he was. I'm like, oh, we should probably fuck it. Like, he'll be dead in like two days. <laughs> let's, let's get a swab and send it in.、Mm -hmm. And the results were、um, fascinating, but also kind of unbelievable.、Mm -hmm. Maybe slightly believable. It was just a weird mix. And none of the breeds they said he was looked anything like him, but you could kind of be like, okay. Maybe if you matched him up in a certain way, it would work. But、um, I mean, at this point, there's just so much inbreeding that it would be weird to. Yeah. And also, it's like dog breeds aren't different species, they are genetically very, similar, very、yeah. similar. They're mostly just visually different. So, I well, don't this know. This lady, though, is. She is part Alaskan Malamute. Yeah, which is pretty cool. She's a hybrid. Yeah. So, good for her. Mm hmm. Now, not, it's, it's still less than half, so she can't wear that, like, kiss me, I'm Alaskan Malamute shirt. She would,、yeah. would, would not be accurate. But she can go to restaurants. Speaking of which, it is、uh, St. Patrick's Day,、uh, the day, somewhere around when this goes up. So, yeah, yeah.、Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. If you're 40% Irish, well, today you're 100% Irish. That's right. If、yeah. you're 0% Irish, everybody's you're 100% Irish, today. Irish. Yeah. We're all Irish on this blessed day. Harry Potter actress worried about adult fans. They should be over that by now. This is like a recurring thing you see with a lot of actors who were in projects that went on to become like cult status. They're、yeah. just like, listen, it was, it was a good job. I have no fucking clue why people are still obsessed with this.、Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a kid's with, movie, right? <laughs> specifically with Harry Potter, it is 
fascinating to see the lengths at which multiple generations will go to still latch onto the fandom in the in spite of the fact that the creator herself is Did you see what she said this week? Yes. <laughs> Is what turns out to be one of the worst fucking people. Lady, on you her. have like a billion dollars. Just, Just go shut do the whatever fuck the fuck. Like, yeah, no. Her uh, her turf arc, which has been going for a long time now, but this this week she specifically like dabbled in Holocaust. She, denial. yeah, she denied uh, the documented historic fact that the first book burning in Nazi Germany was of uh, the research of a doctor who was, uh, he had studied gender and, uh, you know, t- trans stuff, uh, one of the first people to do it. And she's just like, where are people getting this crazy idea? Gosh, you people really are like in a cult. And it's like, lady, if I wrote the most successful children's book series of all time, you would never hear, never from, me hear from me again. Yeah. What are you doing? Why are you so obsessed? You, why are you so obsessed with what happens in public restrooms? You haven't taken a shit or a piss in a public restroom in 15 years. Shut up, Joan. Yeah, it is. It's bizarre that the people you wrote a book under a, a a vague name that sounded male, J.K. Rowling. You didn't write a book as Joan Rowling. What's that about? I don't know. There's a lot going on, but it is it is still a little bit weird that like people are so wrapped up in this series and series of movies that it has defined their entire lives. No, it is fucking weird. Like, but and, like, and, and the, the, the one thing about adult fans should be over by now, that, that's even crazier because some of the adult fans that they're talking about weren't born when, this, when like the film and original books were released. There's adult fans now. Yeah. This, this shit I mean, is there, so old. There's adult fans in their 40s. Uh, yeah, I find it, I mean, I find it strange, but I want to be clear. I find pretty much all adult, like, Fandoms? adults who are still really, really committed to uh, IPs that are clearly designed for children. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I'm not going to judge you too hard. There is a way to do it in a healthy way. But, like, what are you doing staying up late at night uh, arguing about fucking Star Wars for? Sir, you are 50 years old. Something to do, community to belong to. But I I feel like it's different. Why are you pulling Funko Pops out of a crying child's hands? George Lucas isn't out there pounding the pavement against fucking minorities and gay people. And And George Lucas has uh, many, many times over the years said, yeah, Star Wars is for children. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's a children's movie. So, I don't know. I agree with this actress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grow up. (laughs) Grow up. Want a more sustainable meat for the grill? Try a 13-foot python steak. Is this coming out of Florida? No. Because uh, they have the, you can legally hunt. Yeah, they are. I mean, this is something, uh, They the article does mention Florida and how, like, it could be something worthwhile there. But they're like, in the U.S., like, meat is cheap enough that this that won't have a lot of appeal. Mm-hmm. But they're like, places, other places that are, where meat is more expensive and you have pythons, they're, they're like, basically looking at the python as the possible meat source of the future because it requires almost no water. Like, very lean. Very, you can literally feed it like rodents, mm-hmm. so it takes care of that problem. There's all the, It's got bones like a fish. Skinning it, the whole uh, butchering process, you just like cut one cut and you just peel the damn thing off. Mm-hmm. And one python is like a fuckload of meat. It's all meat. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's a good point. It leaves a tail for me. And I've had I've had snake. It's good. It's good meat. Yeah. It's like chicken, in, in which by which I mean uh, it's extremely bland, and it all comes down to the, the seasoning spices, yeah. that you use. Uh, no, they they th- this would make sense in Florida because they they did the same thing with lionfish, lionfish invasive taking yeah. over, killing all the local wildlife. They're like, you know what? This tastes pretty good. Everyone, this tastes pretty good. Yeah, It'd be really cool if everyone caught these to eat them. I mean, w- like with this, it's like, I mean, snake actually does taste good, and, and the lionfish tastes fine too. It's just. It's weird because it's a very poisonous. Yeah, hard so there, to, there's more issues with that one. Yeah, but anyways, uh, eat the snake. Eat the snake. Lincoln woman exploits pump glitch to get over twenty seven thousand dollars of free gas. Police say. That's, Why are the police getting involved? That's so much gas. Also, yeah. I don't see a crime being committed. Yeah. Because so what this lady the discovered. The system exploits you. So oh, when I exploit the system one time. Yeah, she found that basically like swiping her gas card twice just. Put it into test mode. Cool. I mean, obviously, I don't care what kind of like fucking coal rolling, gas guzzling uh, car you drive. 
$27,000 worth of free gas in like less than a year. It's a lot. It's a lot of gas. I, I so would assume I think, that she's probably like, yo, I found something out. Everyone, let me go with you to the gas station. I'll get you your free gas. Yeah, yeah. She was, she she was, was pimping that gas all over it, town. Spreading the gas around yeah. like a good friend. Yeah, this is like a, a, a Robin Hood for gas. It's like, look, the, the machine said I could have the gas for free. How, where, what, what crime has been committed? I was just doing what the pump said. Yeah, if you, if you got beef with anyone, it's the people that programmed this piece of shit. Yeah, go find them. Talk to them. Yeah, the gas is gone. Mm-hmm. I can't give you the gas back. Burned it. <laughs> U.S. town's $565,000 sand dune project washed away in days. Yeah, this is a, a, a little beachside town in Massachusetts that uh, keeps getting... Uh, the ocean's getting pretty damn close to these houses. It used to be a little farther away. And uh, the community got together, they pulled their money and spent more than half a, a million dollars on putting the, like, just like dozens of truckloads of imported sand onto the beach to make a, a makeshift dune. And three days later, a big wave came and just washed the whole fucking thing away. And the people behind it, they're like, oh, actually, that's good. It's a, it's a sacrificial dune. So he did his job. Yeah. But I, I get the impression most people were like, wait, I was under the impression that uh, the dune... No, was no, it, was no. It, it just wasn't a one-time use, half a million dollars. No, no, too. no, residents. You don't understand. This happened exactly the way that we planned. It was a sacrificial dune. Yeah, I mean, they said, like, when they do it again, uh, once, they, <laughs> once, they, once they get the money, they're like, yeah, uh, if you do this at a time of year when it's not about to be washed away by a storm uh, and you can, you have time to uh, grow, like, moss or whatever, just plants that grow in the sand, sand plants, beach plants that actually put roots down and create structure on it. Yeah, maybe this, uh, maybe it won't all wash away in one night. I would suggest um, moving. Yeah, this is, uh, you are fighting against forces of nature beyond your control. It literally laughed at you. Yeah. You did this and it laughed at you. Nice dune. It'd be a shame if I scooped it back out (laughs) into the ocean. Ugh. 80-year-old man cloned sheep via illegal animal parts to create and hunt enormous hybrid species. I know I usually say we should let the old people get away with stuff, but this seems kind of weird. This guy, I mean, he's coming in his twilight years, and, you know, everyone deserves to have one shot at being a mad scientist. Yeah, his, uh, look, this guy's did. not trying to be president. Uh, he's just trying <laughs> to create the biggest fucking sheep you've ever seen so he can shoot it in the head with his gun. Yeah. Uh-huh. Where's the harm? That's a normal 80-year-old 80 80 thing to do. Running the country I've is not... I've been shooting sheep in the head my entire life. Yeah. It would be nice if I could shoot a sheep in the head that had the biggest fucking set of horns I've ever seen. Old, old people, people that old, they know what they're doing. They're creating, uh, you know, hybrid animals. They're doing drugs and winning races. And they're running for president. That's like the three things... And they're building the Titanic. And they're building the Again. Titanic. And they're waving to you and checking your receipt at Walmart. Yeah. Um, there's a, those are the only options. So, at least this guy's not running for president. He's doing things a little bit different. Uh-huh. French appetite for frog's legs threatens frog species, <laughs> experts warn Macron. Again, I, I really, really like frog's legs. There's not a whole lot of places you can get them, but I quite like them. I don't uh, know if I've had it or not. They're like, it, it's literally... Like chicken? It, yeah, it, again, it's, it's like... It's, real, it's, it's like, like most reptile. It's like really tender chicken wings um, covered in a sort of oily uh, French sauce. Mm-hmm. Very salty, very savory. Do you pick them up and go... You can, if you want. But I... Send me a kiss by wire. It is funny to me that, like... Like, the French love these frog legs. They're putting them in oh, on the endangered species list. Yeah. And it's such a, like, specific thing. Like, does anywhere else in Europe eat frogs? Like, why is it just the French? I don't know. How did they, like, it seems like the cuisine, like, there's, you know, they all have their own cuisine, but there's a lot of much crossover. Like, well, much the ingredients like the, are all pretty much, much the like same. Much like the python, it was probably a point in time where they're like, fuck, we got a lot of frogs. Even if that wasn't true yeah. back then. Like, because there wasn't a way to it scientifically like do it. Louis, like, I see a bunch of frogs. It all dates back to, uh, you know, 800 years ago when Louis the Seventh uh, said, let them eat frogs. Yeah. So they everyone did. Everyone's like, that sounds great. So they did, because if they didn't, they would be killed. Yeah. Hey, what is that? Onion soup? Yeah, it's French onion soup. That's right. Can't get this anywhere else. You can't. No. It's our soup. No. John Hinckley Jr., who shot Ronald Reagan, keeps having concerts postponed. <laughs> and it's it, every time, just... Yeah. Sorry, everyone. He uh, keeps getting booked at places, and then uh, 
I don't think he's managed to play a single show. And it's been a couple of years now. Yeah. And listen, this man may have tried to kill the president. He served his time. He's, he served his time. He repaid his debt to society. Uh, and it's actually, this is how it should work. Because another thing, like, what's funny about this is, like, you hear someone tried to kill the president. You must be, you're like, oh, they must have some, like, very extreme political beliefs. But no, that's the great thing about John Hinckley is he's just fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. He didn't do it for any, like, reasons that are you can understand outside of his own brain. Yeah. So it's fine. He's not going to go on a rant about how uh, killing presidents is cool. That's just something his broken brain told him to do. Yeah, now and, he's telling him to play music live. And the justice system worked. Like, he served a, a shitload of time in prison, and they're like, okay, this guy, like, we got him on, like, the right drugs, and he seems pretty okay now. So they released him to, like, supervised release where he couldn't leave his mom's house for, like, five years. Mm-hmm. And they're like, all right, he did, did great with that. Spends most of his time playing guitar because he can't leave the house. So we're going to let him leave the house if he wants to. And uh, and now he wants to play his songs. And uh, I, venues him? don't want the controversy that comes with having a presidential assassin on their stage. Yeah. Life is rough out there for old John Hinckley Jr. Yeah. It's too bad. Yeah. They're all high. New Orleans police say rats can't stop eating marijuana in evidence room. <laughs> These marijuana rats have taken over. I mean, it sounds like it probably kills two birds with one stone because they're like, you don't have to burn the evidence to get rid of it, which like is going to cause everyone it to get It does high. kill two birds with one stone. Like when the FBI comes and says, hey, all that marijuana you confiscated in those drug busts, why is there so much less of it in rats, your storage? Oh, these rats. Oh my God. You wouldn't believe the appetite and then the, these rats The rats have. are all stoned, so they're not uh, scurrying around doing their rat things. If, if in fact these rats are real and not... A convenient excuse. I feel like it would be like something different than marijuana, though. Yeah, I guess they're just eating everything and shitting everywhere. I, it, this is probably true because this is a police station that got like completely flooded during Katrina yeah. and has had like serious problems ever since then. The building should probably just be condemned. But um, yeah, apparently, if you're working New Orleans PD and you get assigned to this station, it's just it apparently sucks. Yeah. There's like one toilet for the whole building. <laughs> I. I always feel bad for New Orleans. Such a like a wonderful place with such amazing like music and cuisine, just in a place that is that should be. Yeah, I not, mean it's people should not be able to live there because it and is, they probably won't be able to live there in not too long of time. Beautiful place, incredible music, great people, amazing. Well, it's food, like sinking into just, the ground. Yeah, like, just well, walk. It's, our, it's below the water level. Like, That's why the whole Katrina thing happened. But like you walk around like the sidewalk, there's just like craters in it. Like yeah. the city is, it's uh, its too bad because I always have a great time there. And um, the food's good. The rats and love their weed. The rats love marijuana. Uh-huh. They're chill rats. But uh, yeah. And final headline, Saudi Arabia's first male humanoid robots groping incident sparks debate. Oh my God. The video, so they made, uh, Saudi loves, they love tech stuff. Yeah, they do. Um, and yeah, they made uh, some robots. They made a robot of a guy in like a full um, kafia, I think. Anyway, he's dressed up like like a Saudi. And they had him at this big event being like, check it out, Saudi bot. And uh, this woman reporter like standing in front and you just see the Saudi bot just like standing there and like his hand just <laughs> touches her ass. And she's like, what the fuck? Was it autonomous and or was someone controlling it? I don't, they say, oh, he just did that on his own. Like, it's so funny. The reporter turns to the robot and she's like, whoa, buddy. And it's like. It's not going to respond. Yeah, it, it doesn't know anything. Yeah. It's a stupid robot. You know, Elon Musk is probably like, they, they beat me to the punch. They did. But I was trying to build a womanizing robot. Well, when the Saudis gave you all that money yeah. for Twitter, um, it came with a price. That's right. They, they stole your idea, Elon. Your idea for the groping robot. Already being used. The groping robot that you c- you can just blame uh, for your own perversions wasn't me. It was a groping robot. The robot tried to give this woman a horse after I harassed her. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Where did it get that idea? Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, make sure you like the video. Make sure you like it. Make sure you leave a, a comment. Also, uh, if you want to be annoyed by posts, uh, I am running the LA Marathon this weekend. I'm a, a, very, uh, a very happy boy. Uh, hopefully I finish. So if you want to see the glory of winning or the soul-crushing defeat, if I don't make it, I think I'll make it unless my knees blow out. But uh, that could happen. 
It, I, it does happen quite I a lot. Did, quite often. I had an injury after the last one, and uh, and that was just a half marathon. So fingers crossed, yeah, but I just, think I'm good to go. Just bring some salt tablets. Uh, follow me on Instagram. My name on there is Ricky F T W R I C K Y F T W. Going to be posting a lot from the uh, the marathon this weekend. I'm very. I'll be a very happy boy if I finish it. So live that glory with me, or whatever. Anyways, uh, yes, like the video, leave a comment, and check out our other videos. We got Alex Jones. Eating leftist ass. I will eat your leftist ass. But only in a cannibalistic way. Mm -hmm. And we also have NFT Nick. Two terrible people to watch videos about. Two characters. There you go. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.